another half hour in. Morning, Frank. Morning. One of the cylinders spluttering. Sort of the spark plug, I think. I had a look at it. It's all right now. Hey, Sarge. before breakfast. Only way to get your flying hours in. One hour roll between ten of us. And half an hour now, so we've got six hours up. Wait, you've done 40 over any real length. If... Number nine or so, and I should be posted to a squadron. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's scandalous, but sending men over there with 15 hours in their books. It's enough. You put your mind to it. <laughs> It's me out of flying an aeroplane and taking off, winding to make it right. Left hand turns, you know. Not here, there isn't. Captain Tiggers has a set of rules. You have to learn them by heart, and God help you if you break them. You know, they were talking about you in the Blue Anchor last night. Said you were pretty good. Well, I'm the only one who hasn't crashed a bus yet, that's all. Hey, they were talking about your father. Aye. I need a plane he'd help to rebuild or something with it. Yes. Engine failed on takeoff. Fire? Yes. Terrible thing, fire. Yeah. You saw it happening? Yes. Oof. You know, I've seen it happen to my father. Put me off this flying lark altogether. <laughs> but not you, eh? <laughs> Shouldn't have turned back. If the engine fails on take off, you never turn back. A killer mistake, Captain Triggers calls it. You put your nose down to maintain flying speed, and for a place to land it. You're the one that doesn't make mistakes, right? One mistake is too many, according to Captain Triggers. Oh, there are wee mistakes. Wee ones. A fella can learn from them. The big one. Well, a fella that never makes mistakes might just end up making that biggest one of the lot, you know. Oh. Oh, we see your wings already, yeah? Well, I hope they're the right sort. Not the ones that go with a heart. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the flying blacksmith lands. Charles, what are you doing here? All stations to Sedoma are fixed them in Calais. Close to the France, eh? Mm, but I didn't count on a dud engine and a brand new bus, too. Some say good old Royal Aircraft Factory. Yeah, some yes, say... no wonder half our chaps never get to France. Uh, our machines, they're the real enemy, sir. Not the Hun at all. <laughs> That's no joke, old sir. Oh, don't worry. You'll get yours soon enough. They're so hard up for chaps, they're giving them to dud flyers, too. Alan's no dud. He's the best flyer in our lot. The flying blacksmith. Steady and reliable, eh? Um... Well, that's what they teach us to be, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is Sergeant McIver. How, How do you do? do? Sir, 
I'm Roger Pearson, second lieutenant Charles Galeon. How do you know, sir? Uh, you'll be uh, hungry, sir. <clears throat> oh, ravenous. Oh, but uh, will they serve a fully fledged chap in the pupil's mess? Most. Uh, how many sausages? The more the merrier. Tea or coffee? Tea. I have distinct memories of that coffee. Right, right. Better in France. <laughs> Thicker, anyway. It's mud in the water. You took your ticket here, sir? Yes, uh, along with Alan, but he was held up. Had to do his initial army training first. Yes, so did I. Beastly rotten waste of time. Thumping up and down a parade ground, sticking bayonets in sacks. <laughs> I could have been in France by now, shooting down Huns. It's hardly the object, is it? Our role in this war is reconnaissance. Not according to Captain Triggers. He's teaching us to kill them before they kill us. No, 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 no. How to defend yourself in the air. But what's the difference? Anyway, you shot one down. Go on, tell him about it. No, no, not just now. Frank's an observer. Three months in France without leave. He flew with Captain Triggers. Hey, your coffee's getting cold. He and Triggers made a lone raid on a German airfield. Got a hand just as he was taking off. Hardly stood a chance, I do say. It's not all what you might think it is over there, sir. So, Captain Triggers is teaching you to shoot down Huns too, is he? He and Frank are giving a lecture this morning. Well, as I'm off to the front tomorrow, perhaps I ought to attend. Oh, thanks, Alan. Tomorrow, you said? Ah, yes. They're uh, sing to my engine this morning, but I'm taking no chances. I want to give her a thorough test before I go. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to see you off and go home tomorrow. Oh, one night. Is it worth the journey? As long as she's home before milking time. <laughs> so, still the farmer's daughter, is it, eh? Hey, you're not married or anything, are you? Of course not. Oh, good. Shouldn't waste any time, old son. We'll be over there soon enough. How many hours have you got up here, Charles? Fourteen. Well, and he's 50 at least before going over there. Not that pilots matter, really. The observer's the important chap. So he is. <laughs> pilot's just a chauffeur. Then where do you want to be one? Because I have my life in two hands, not the inky fingers of some schoolboy with 14 hours. Of... Yes, but it's not the number of hours that counts. It's making the best use of them. I mean, do you know why so many of our chaps go west? Hmm? Because they obey the rules. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's perfectly simple. You may obey the rules, but your poor old machine won't. Aeroplanes, they're like horses. They get restless now and then, and then suddenly do something you don't expect them to do. You mean like stalling and going into a spin? Exactly. And what do you do then? Pray. Not much else one can do. Well, I'd rather face an enemy than have him catch me unawares. Don't you, Alan? Chap it up, Aiden, show me how. Been flying for five years, survived 11 crashes and a couple of them bad ones, too. Come up to 5,000 feet, he said, and stick on my tail. <laughs> well, you don't have to get the wind up, but you do learn, and fast. Oh, what's the matter? I'm still alive, aren't I? And I have a damn good chance of saying that word. Now, believe you me, half the things they tell you an aeroplane won't stand up to is absolute rot. Uh, what about the other half? Well, that's why you need to be on the tail of someone who knows what he's doing. You're jolly lucky to find such a chap. Ah, well, I'm uh, perfectly prepared to pass the benefit on to anyone who's interested. <laughs> what a pity I'm not down for flight today. Oh, what about you, Alan? We've got the Trigger's lecture at 10 o'clock today. Oh, yes, yeah. defending ourselves in the air, I know. But we've got to beat our biggest enemy. Our machines. Isn't that right, Frank? Look, after Trigger's lecture, if no one crashes the Avro and the wind doesn't get up, I'll be on a 30-minute flight by compass. Splendid! And you'll be well out of range of our Hawkeyes. Sir. Trigger's fades out. You'll have your ears. How many days lead did they give you? Five. Longest five days of your night, I bet. Longest five nights, I do know that. I, uh, did whoop it up, rather, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I uh, finished it off quite nicely with a farewell dinner at the Piccadilly. My mother cancelled one of her meetings with the Belgian Relief, and even my sister deigned to eat at my expense. Your sister? Mm. Kate brought along a couple of her chums. Two no conscription fellowship Johnnies. Pacifist. I didn't know you had a sister. Yeah. I thought I was in for rather a jolly evening explaining my reasons why he wanted to fight for my country. But thank the Lord, they don't count flyers. Obviously, agree with the general staff. The only use for aeroplanes is putting the wind up the crowds at Hendon and uh, advertising the Daily Mail. Yeah. Well, he's quite nice. Yeah, but well, you can't see the stripes there. My sister, passive his friends or not, is a veritable tigress. Oh, yes, she eats three of you before breakfast, flying goggles and all. Well, what about it? Are you game for flying on my tail or are you not? Oh, well, as I say, it does uh, take a bit of nerve, but. Uh, do learn fast. Thanks for the offer, Charles. My pleasure. Farewell gift, shall we say? Thank you. Alan will be coming today. There was a letter when I got home from the round yesterday. What else did he say? Not much. My letters are nothing but aeroplanes. You'd think it was me training for my wings. He didn't mention crashes? No.
You worry, I suppose. After his father, I mean. I've been reading those flight magazines up in his room. Well, you know, my own here in the evenings. It's nothing but crashes when they're learning to fly. That extra quartz for a rice pudding. He's I terrible spoke... for it with jam. That you're fond of it. Yes, I had guessed. So why worry too? I've asked Tom and Harry to come in. I mean, Alan's only here for one night. You don't mind? Oh, of course not. I asked Tom's wife, too. Alice? She felt she'd be imposing. Well, she's an old-fashioned sort altogether. She fusses over Harry's arm. He's so independent. Why does he stay over there? Oh, well, he's content enough, I think. Seems strange. This being his old home, I mean. And only you living in it. Well, he can't stay here. Why not? He's your brother-in-law. Yes, I know, but... Well, a man and a woman in the same house together, that wouldn't be right. Did Alan say what time he was coming in his letter? Oh, it depends whether he's flying or not. Such a shortage, he says. One aeroplane for ten of them. Mm -hmm. And they have to take turns. And if anyone crashes that... Oh, are they getting on, Tom and Harry? Oh, like a house on fire. Not enough work for three hours. That's right. I sent Sam and the lad off round the farms first thing. Boiling and sharpening. Who'll be my striker, then? I will. Of course, I won't be up to Sam's mark. You'll have to do the sledging yourself. You've got the arms for it, old man or not. Oh, by the way, Charlie Rampman's calling in later on for air cut. I told him he was charging for air cuts from now on. Charging for air cuts? He has air cut in Caxton. He has to be charged, doesn't he? Look. Best coal, that black-faced profiteer calls it. Fuel getting scarce. We're lucky to have coal at all. Nonsense. Government work these mule in our shoes. There's no profit in it either. Flinker. Ruins the work. Any good smithy knows that. Old days would have had him off his cart and beat the coal dust out of his bones. Good old days, eh, Tom? Prices we're charging, anyone would think we're still living in them. Here, we'll do this scuttle for Mrs. Harper. As you promised her. We done. That's a job I can do. You get on cutting them lengths. The observers firing from a moving platform. The target moving the opposite direction. And at an undetermined speed. So even if it's a crack shot like Sergeant McIver here, he'll still need your help. You can fire with reasonable freedom above and above the beam. And if he fires directly aft, you can kill the little bird who flies him home. Of course, if you go west, your observer goes west with you. Now remember that. Your observer's life is in your delicate little hands. Fine forward. Now, you can't fire through the arc of the propeller, of course. So if your hun is directly ahead, you're going to have to yaw to port or to starboard to enable your observer to get his shots in. You know what yawing is, Pearson? Sir, it's when the machine moves like this in the horizontal plane. Right. Webley Scott, 45. Most I ever did with this was to slice one of my own flying bars. However, the 45 does have its uses. Gay Lion. I was told you were here, so you're off to France tomorrow. Yes, sir. How many hours? 14, sir. Have you made the best use of them, have you? I think I have, yes, sir. Blue Anchor this evening. I'll buy you a farewell drink. Thank you, sir. And don't trouble to say any farewells to Farmer there. He'll soon be hot on your tail. Got his engine fixed, then? Yes. Why isn't he off to France now instead of waiting till tomorrow? You ask me, he's got cold feet. What do you make of him then? All this fuss over one hun. Hey, <laughs> you think about bullet through his mother or something? He's entitled to his own opinion. And what's that? The enemy, aren't they? You're a fool. Do you know that? Alan, it affects fellas different ways, mate. What does? Well, I remember the day before I went over there. I'd never had a fight before in my life. That day, two drinks, one of the poor fellas had to go to hospital. Well, that pal of yours, it's the same thing. You're getting the rough end of it, though. 
He may not know it, but he's just spoiling for a fight. Well, one minute he's spoiling for a fight, next he's got cold feet. Doesn't make much sense to me. Well, neither do you. No crashes, no mistakes, and now you just want to... Do you want to end up like your father, is that it? You go ahead with it, then. I haven't got cold feet. Don't talk too soon. They may be colder than your fancy. Cheerful chap you are. Thanks, anyway. That damn fool. Thanks for the Avro, sir. Permission to take off. The gay lion. 14 hours in his book and already a three ring sex. 30 minute flight by compass, farmer. Yes, sir. Got my list, Sergeant McIver? Sir. Number one. The engine fails and take off, never turn back. Uh, get your nose down, maintain flying speed, look for a suitable place to land. Number two. Before a crash landing, always switch off. Avoid the risk of fire.
Was I right or not? Yes, you were right. You learned fast. You don't look very grateful. You could have killed us both diving on me like that. Well, had the desired effect. Anyway, that's our purpose now, isn't it? Killing, according to Captain Triggers. He's teaching us to defend ourselves in the air. Oh, yes. Well, of course, he's uh, some kind of hero to you, isn't he? I wouldn't say that. Huh? But did he give me my chance to train as a pilot? Yes, so... yes, yes. Still got that motorbike? Yes. Well, what's up with you? What's up with me? It's a good one. Frank's right, yes. yes. What is Frank so right about? Well, I expect I'll feel the same when it comes to my turn to go. What do you mean by that? Look, if you're implying that I'm getting the wind up... Don't be daft. I want this talk of killing, shooting down Huns. I joined the court to fly, not to kill. So did I. It was so did that Hun. When they shot us, the poor devil was trying to take off. I mean, put yourself in his place. They are the enemy, you know. He was also a fellow flyer. The brotherhood of all who fly. Well, you don't believe in it, obviously. Yes, I do. He waves to us, we wave to him. Appreciation of sharing a common danger. It can't go on like that. No, it can't. Not if chaps like Triggers have their way. We'll soon be slaughtering each other in the air, just as they're doing down there on the ground. Oh, you're wrong about him. Oh, no, I'm not. I met chaps like him before in my regiment. Born for killing, inspiring others to kill. <laughs> Oh, my father will be so pleased to know we have chaps like Triggers, too. He'll never forgive me for transferring from the regiment. To his way of thinking, I joined the RFC to duck my share of the killing. You think the same thing, too, I suppose. Who wants to kill? Triggers! Let's forget it, shall we? No, I'd... I'd like to know your opinion. On what? That Hun! Look, I don't know why you're making all the fuss. There are hundreds of Germans being killed every day in the trenches. That's another matter. We're flyers. We're different. Well, surely you understand that. I'm not sure that I do. Well, we have some code of honour, surely. Man is a man, alive or dead, in the trenches or in the air. Oh, bravo! You condone it, then? That hunt. You do the same. I don't know what I'd do or wouldn't do. You mean you haven't got a mind of your own? I don't know what I might like over there. I don't know what I might do. Well, you do exactly what he do. That's your trouble, Alan. You're so damned naive. I'm not naive. Listen, you're going to France tomorrow. Go on, you started to offer me yes, advice. Yes, all right, I am. You go papering about like you did up there today, and the Hun's got to find you easy, meat. I did think you might have understood, but I obviously should have known better. A blacksmith. I was like MacKyver. One can't expect chaps of your class to appreciate matters of honour and chivalry and the proper conduct of gentlemen. Good luck, Charles. You put the prices up, people will go elsewhere. To Hartford, you mean? <laughs> Two or three mile. Walk hundred some of them round here, save a penny. They won't get your class of craftsmanship in Hopford, though, will they, Tom? Profit, profit. I run this scuttle around to Mrs. Harper. Here, I'll take it. I want a word with her. The charge in her mind. We're running this place like a blacksmith's shop from now on, not a charity bazaar. They're both coming in to eat with Alan tonight, remember?
Find a way. Maps and compass. Did you say goodbye to him? Yes. Is his mother still packing parcels for the Belgians? Well, she don't pack them. She's on the committee. She organises it. Well, the things women are doing nowadays. Here's me. Four pairs of gloves and two scarves. <laughs> if it weren't for you and the others, them committees wouldn't have nothing to put in their parcels, would they? Profit, right. profit. That's right. all anyone thinks of these times. times. <laughs> the wages they pay those women in Claiborne's factory are scandalous. Mm. And not content any of them. Still wanting more by the hour. Oh, they're doing their bits. I ain't grabbing every half penny they can get. Did he get any leave before he left? Well, Charles, yes. Went to the Piccadilly restaurant. Oh, well, that was nice for him. His mother and his well, sister. Sister? Yes. Didn't tell me he had a sister. Denied what he has. Shortage of shells, they say. Really? Yet there's all this money being made in the factories. So there's something wrong somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. At the top, no doubt, Tom. Not being organised proper. Ah, they should have you there, eh? Telling them what to do. Rice pudding for afters. Hey, but you haven't had any of that in your mess, Alan. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought it would be a special treat. We will be, no doubt about it. Unless army rice puddings improved since I were there. We don't have it with jam. God made the days to live and be contented. <laughs> and not charge the cost by the hour. Even the Smithies want more money now. Even? Good God, Smithies eat as well, do they? Mix up over the price of shoes and the government contract. Quite right, we're losing money over them shoes. Price of iron and coal being what it is, I think we should drop them. What if every Smithy in the country did that? We can't work at a loss, Tom. You were in the cavalry. What would you have done without a mount? Come infantry, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, we've got our cavalry of the clouds now, eh, Alan? Come on, Mum. Have you met her? Who? Oh. Charles's sister. Oh, no, I've seen a picture, though. What's her name? Kate. Prices are not our concern. You and me, that is. That's right. Our wages to be paid, whether there be profit or no. <laughs> profit, profit. The papers are full of it. People are drunk with it. There's a little bit more to life than profit, you know. Well, we should know that, Tom, if anybody does. Our charges are the same today as they were in my father's day. Did you know that, Alan? Our charges? The missus of the boss, you remember? Yes, you nice. left here as a lad years ago, Tom. not caring tuppence. And now you come back and you want to run the but place. that's not Hold true, on, Tom. Tom. You're not working with him. I am. Or for him, rather. But it's not the army out there, nor an ammunition factory. You're overdoing it, Tom. The smithy's the boss out there. Your brother Willie understood that. So do I. I don't be Sergeant Farry about, nor speed it up. So, if you want to put up the charges, say what's what, be the boss out there, you better be the smithy too, in my place. I'm sorry, missus, but there it is. Trust me. Anyone ready for rice pudding? Oh, there's plenty of summer play cards or. One of the three gramophone records, but they're not triggers. Oh, no, no. Oh, he'd haul me out. Come on, he'd say, we'll go look for the hunt. His pastime, is it? Hunting the hunt. One particular one, yeah. The one that got Paddy Walters. And who's Paddy Walters? Triggers Observer. Hell on fire. Going down in flames. Leyland's off to France tomorrow. He doesn't want to hear your tales of worms. Is that? Excuse me, sir, could you help us out? I'm not too sure. But you're the only person who knows the worst of the last verse, sir. Go on, sir, be a sport. Thank you, sir. Okay, Lion. See you in number two hangar tomorrow morning before you go. You were uh, telling me about Trigger's Observer, Paddy Waters. Aye. And this hunt shot them down. Trigger's got out all right, but Paddy been hit. Triggers couldn't get to him. Paddy was dead? No, no, he wasn't dead. No, he came to, just as the flame. There was nothing Triggers could do. What did he do? As he said this morning, 
45 has its uses. Take a shot. Terrible thing for a man to carry around in his mind, eh? Was that the same hand? The one that you and... Oh, I. Oh. We went out looking for him. More than a week we looked. Never saw a hair of him. So Trigger said if he won't come out, we'll make him come out. We went over the honey airfield. <laughs> the hornet's nest. Everything's shooting away at us. I thought we were done for, I tell you. But he said we'd get that hand. And we did. Oh, he's a vengeful man, right, you know. Well, there's none better. I can promise you that. Would you like another drink? I'll show it to you. We have to go back tomorrow. Maybe fly in Monday morning. How long will it be? before you go to France? Oh, as soon as I... Well, as long as it takes me to get my flying hours in. You're anxious to be there, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose I am. What's troubling you? Tom walking out tonight? No, no. Well, it was Charles. He's going off to France tomorrow, and we didn't part on the best of terms, and my fault, because all he said was right. Yeah. It's all right. It's just that I'm so proud of you, Alan. And I'm so lucky. You, you will take care, won't you? Take care. Hey. It's Charles going off tomorrow, not me. We shall manage all right without him. We've got Sam. The lad. Oh, well, on the shelf over there. Sam's all right as Dorman, but he's no use as Smith. And you can't. What are you doing? Speak to Tom, put matters to rights. How? Apologize. You do no such thing. I'm not used to being told what to do and what not to do. Neither is Tom. I don't want you to apologise to him, not for my sake. Well, I'd best be going anyway. Yes. Alice locks up at ten o'clock. Two bolts in the back door. I don't relish climbing through the window. I'll say good night then. Good night. Ah, don't worry. I'm giving her a good tuning up. She sounds really sweet now. Good. Thanks. Oh, uh, Captain Triggers wanted to see me here. So he did. Have you any idea why? Here we are. Oh, it's just your size. I've gone to a great deal of trouble to get this. We all had the weather for France. If you do come down in the channel, at least it'll keep you afloat long enough. Long enough for what, sir? To make you regret having ever left the cavalry. <laughs> Good luck, dear lion. Thank you, sir. Good luck, sir. Thank you, Frank. Don't bat an eyelid. Pardon, sir? Sergeant Williams finds one of his black cars missing. Ah. Morning, Tom. Fresh again. You might be back this morning, eh? I'm glad you are back. I've been in this darn place so long, 
I begin to think of it as my own. But it's not. It belonged to your father and his father before him, and oh, you've got a right to say how it's run. <laughs> Alice said to go at me this morning. The way prices are going up, she says, I shall have to have more money soon. How can they pay you more money if they don't put the charges up, she says. <laughs> yeah. How are you this? Horsetail shag, we used to call it in the cavalry. It takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, not having two hands. Uh, I suppose I've been trying to make up for it with my tongue. Telling others what to do. Women. <laughs> you boys. You know that. Maybe. Well, I'll beat you in Huntley stable. You know what that means, dear? Yes, sir. She'll bang automatically when you push right or left rudder to make a turn. Now, never rely on it. Never rely on anything anybody tells you about an aeroplane. Always find out for yourself. And if in doubt, trust your own instinct. You won't go far wrong. That doesn't apply to everybody. In fact, it applies to very few. Natural flyers. So it applies to you. And they're not bad machines. Bound to be flying one when you go over there, God help you. So you better start putting some hours in. But I haven't put in my required number on the average. No, you've done sir. enough. Putting half an hour on the average this morning, starting the B2s tomorrow. Yes, sir. How's your, how's your lamp signaling? Well, pretty good, sir. I won't ask about your engine fitting. They tell me you can teach the mechanics here a thing or two. Right, then. I'll arrange for you to take your ground test one day next week. Thank you, sir. And don't get too impatient, farmer. You'll be over there soon enough, believe me. Should be on the BE2. See how pal yours. Charles. He's not such a bad fellow, I suppose. As officers go, that is. Didn't leave any message or anything, did he? No, no, he didn't. Why? Just thought he might have done, that's all. God's sake, man, don't turn back. Well done, lad. Stand up! Control lever forward to maintain flying speed.
Sorry, sir. Made a mistake. Got to switch off. That could just be your observer who's frying in there. sign of the car yet? Well, the car won't be coming to the door. Huh? No. Alan asked Colonel Stark to meet him in Ledby Street. He'd wait from there. It's just like his father. Doesn't want to fuss. He'll say goodbye to us here and, and then go off on his own. It's very kind of Colonel Stark to offer to drive him to the station. Right. I've left them alone in there. Well, it's funny, I... I still can't believe it. It's silly, isn't it? It seems no time since he joined up. Now here he is. Of all people, he... wouldn't want me to make a fuss. As he says, there are hundreds going. His father would be proud of him, wouldn't he? Aye, he would. And rightly. It seems so... senseless and cruel. Men going off to war. It's not nearly so bad for flyers. You're a good man, Harry. You look smart. Well, nothing to say. No, know how Charles felt now. All this time impatient to go, then when the time comes. Anyway. Don't forget to write. I won't. When I do get leave. Yes. Well, I've been thinking. Maybe we ought to make things more definite between us. I mean, that's if you agree. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Well, you best be on your way. Yes. Have you got your sandwiches? In the haversack. But you won't forget the bed. Bed? Well, it can be very damp over there. Not now, it's June, Bone Year. Alice won't be coming over. She's away from the wind instead. Yeah, she's fond of Alan, you know. Well, ready to go at last, eh? Yes, Tom. Uh, you give him what for, eh? Well, there's Harry been off to two wars, and now you're off to one, and he's me, I've never seen a shot fired. Fine thing to tell a son. Oh, I had one. You're the nearest I've had. So look after yourself, Alan. Thanks, Tom. Goodbye, lad. <laughs> 